Hello, my name is Tucker Foster, and today I'll be explaining some climbing terminology. So, this right here would be probably defined as a slopey shelf. This is characterized by a large shelf-like feature in the rock, but it is not completely flat. You can see how it slopes down, hence the name sloper. This would be called a crimp, because it is a very small handhold that you kind of have to get a crimpy hold on to. This would be similar to a pocket, but not quite. You can see because your hands kind of go into an indention into the rock, but it's not quite a perfect pocket. For the start of this problem, a lot of people like to start off with what's called a heel hook, which is where you'll be on the beginning holds and you throw your heel up onto the beginning and you can push or really more of pull off of your heel and propel yourself up. Another common way to, to use your feet would be uh, what I like to call a toe hook, which would be pretty much the opposite of a heel hook. This is where you would get your toe and kind of you pull off of your toe. And that's most of the holds that you can use in the beginning of a route similar to this. So here we have a recording of me attempting and sending a boulder problem in a popular area called Lost Cove. It starts off right there with a really big reach up to these two little crimps where I suddenly had to cut feet. And so right now I'm just laddering up between some crimps, but there that really big throw with my left hand was to one of my favorite holds ever. Let's call it a jug. So right now I'm just relaxing for a little bit because I've got some good holds that I can rest a lot of my weight on and not tire out too much because all the other holds are really bad. Now there I was throwing my hand up to a sloper, so this is really flat, kind of inclined hold that's really hard to hold on to because you're really only using friction for it. And now I have my left hand on a Gaston, which means I'm pushing off the rock away from it. And I'm trying to reach my hand up further to get another sloper way on top of the rock here. This is one of the more awkward top outs for a boulder problem, which you have to do to be considered a send, at least in North Carolina and the Americas. And here, I finally do make it up to the top. I'm just repositioning my feet slightly awkwardly to really just get my weight underneath me. And here, I know I've made it to the top, so I'm just taking a small break and resting up before I finally climb up onto the top and, well, top out, hence the term. And for the lovely spot, I have Miss Lisa there to catch me if I fall and to protect my head from hitting anything bad on the ground. And there you go, finally made it up. So what is one of your favorite things about being out here? You're not even climbing right now and you're enjoying yourself. You're doing your hair up. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we were climbing all day, so it was pretty cool. You know, I got to fondle a lot of rock. Got yeah. to just like look at a lot of really pretty views. Sloan's heading up a 512 right now, which means I'm probably not gonna lead it, but there's a good chance I'll get to top rope it. Oh, he's stick flipping up. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. So wait, what's a stick clip? Well, it's something that we use to like hit the first bolt. So basically like it might not be protected, you know, up to a certain point. And so instead of like climbing up there and like being risky, you have a stick clip. So you can stick the first bolt and still be like on the rope and on the leg. That way like, you know, you don't fall and break your ankle off the first bolt. But after that, it's, you know, all you climbing up. Nice. The next bolt, yeah. So are all these climbs around here bolted that you can just clip into like that? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, a lot of this is probably just not climbable. Um, a lot of it's pretty chossy. You know, it would break off, you know, real flexible rock. Um, but some of it is unbroken or unbolted but climbable and you use like track gear to do that, which is traditional gear. Cams, you know, nuts, things to stick into the rock and just like hold yourself in place. Um, that's also dangerous and risky, but can be done safely. That's what the protection and gear is for. So here we have the wonderful Lexi Chase about to demonstrate how to properly take a lead fall to avoid any kind of injuries. Now with this kind of climbing, you're going to fall a pretty good deal because the rope is beneath you, but see, she pushed her ankles off there and is safe and sound. While this is not the devil's lettuce, Many climbers do enjoy the recreational and medical benefits of marijuana. 
It is a great way to take the edge off after a long day of climbing and to relieve sore joints and muscles after working hard all day. And it's a fun way to just goof off with friends and making fun smoke tricks at the end of the day as well, as evidenced by Mr. Tucker here attempting to perform a French inhale, but mildly failing in the high winds. <laughs> Introduce yourself. So yeah, I'm Carter. Um, I'm the president of the Appalachian State Climbing Team and Coalition. Um, I've been a member of the team since my freshman year, and I'm now a junior. Um, but freshman year, I was just a member, and then last year, I was the vice president, and now I'm the president of the team. Nice. So what does the team actually do at Appalachian here? What is the point of the team? Cool. So we are a club sport on campus, which means that we're one step below varsity. Mm -hmm. So we're more than just a club, we're actually a club sport. Um, the clubs on campus, pretty much anyone can start a club. In order to start a club sport, there's a lot more hoops you have to jump through and also a lot more things you have to do, like budgeting and or organizationally, uh, like in order to maintain your status as a club sport. Um, so things like the rugby team, our club sports, swim team, that kind of thing the alpine ski team or other club sports. Right. Well, that's pretty cool. So you started climbing on the team your freshman year. How long have you been just climbing in general beforehand? Um, so before I was on the team, um, I, well, I actually grew up in Boone, so that's kind of the first thing. So climbing kind of always been around. Um, before I was on the team here, I competed a little bit in high school. For my last two years, I competed in the American Bouldering Series. Um, never quite made it to nationals, but kind of the East Coast, uh, aspect of the series on uh, East Coast yeah. and Midwest and then um, so I, I'd started competing maybe when I was 16 or 17 and then before that there were probably about five years where I uh, didn't really compete but I, I was climbing like indoors and outdoors and then before that it was like a let's go do a birthday party at a gym kind of thing but I've always been a climber I've always I don't really remember the first time I went climbing yeah um, I think since my dad climbed in college a little bit he, he probably yeah. took me bouldering and top roping a little bit when I was a kid, but I've always been fascinated by it, but I really started training and competing uh, probably like late middle school. Nice. That's pretty cool mm -hmm. stuff. So you talked about a little bit in there how climbing is, you never made it to nationals, so that implies mm -hmm. that there's a national championship. Could you go into maybe the history of that a little bit and climbing in the United States and how that all developed? Yeah, so we can kind of work backwards. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, climbing is actually going to be in the Olympics in 2020. Um, it'll be a really kind of interesting format, but it will be in the Olympics. So we're, we are like a sanctioned uh, kind of global competitive sport. Um, and that's for indoor climbing, or we call it indoor, it can be outdoors, but artificial walls. Okay. Um, and so as far as like artificial competitions and things go, uh, over the years there have been many different uh, organizations, though the main one in the US is USA Climbing, mm -hmm. um, which is, I believe they're a nonprofit, don't take my word for it. Um, but they, they organize and sanction climbing competitions all around the world for different age groups, different categories. They even do an adaptive climbing series for people who may have an amputation, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also do, uh, the events that they hold are in all three of the main competitive disciplines of climbing. So speed climbing, which is the same wall and people try to climb it as fast as they can. Uh, so it's the same wall no matter where in the world you are. They build it to the same regulations. And then lead climbing, which is uh, kind of hard to describe, but basically you have eight minutes to get to the top of a route or as high as you can while bringing the rope up with you. And then bouldering, mm -hmm. um, which is there's no rope, but you have these big pole vaulting pads beneath you. And you have four minutes to try to climb a really difficult climb that's maybe 20 feet tall. And you'll, you'll repeat that process until everyone's tried five different climbs. Um, and so that's kind of the format of those different competitions. And those... Those have been refined over the years since probably the 80s. Um, yeah. And then before that, it was mostly outdoor climbing, which is yeah. still uh, kind of parallel with the competitive climbing, but mm -hmm. a lot of times it's different skills and different people. Um, so people wanted to kind of figure out who was the strongest, so they started setting setting these difficult walls and things. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's pretty cool. So that was about some competitions on the national scale. Can you tell me a little bit about something that goes on in Boone? Like, I noticed your shirt is a Houndier <laughs> shirt. Yeah. What's all that about? So, uh, the longest running competition in Boone is the Houndier's Bouldering Competition, mm -hmm. which is held at Houndier's Country Club. It's outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a mix between a festival and a competition. Uh, mm -hmm. It lasts pretty much a whole weekend, though on the Saturday, unless it gets rained out, it's on Sunday. But on the mm -hmm. Saturday, from basically 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., everyone's climbing on these these awesome boulders that are only open to the yeah. public one day a year. 
And that's a part of a three-legged competition called Triple Crown Bouldering. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are other legs. There's one in, uh, there's one at Stonefort, and there's one at Horsepens. And Horsepens is in Alabama, and Stonefort's in Tennessee. Um, and so each of those three legs kind of you get your points from whichever ones you go to, and those can go towards like an overall score, mm -hmm. kind of like if you were to run, or, or like the horses that do the triple crown, like in yeah. horse racing. It's the same kind of thing. So you can just do one, or you can do all the different ones. Um, and then this, the second longest running competition is, uh, you're wearing a shirt for it. It's the Appalachian State Climbing Competition, which is mm -hmm. called Southern Comfort. Um, we've held 19 of them consecutively. Um, though we're mixing it up a little bit this spring, we're actually doing a service day uh, to kind of give back to the community a little bit. Um, so we're doing a spring service day, and then in the fall we'll resume our regular competition. Mm -hmm. um, though SOCO has been held at several different locations, it's usually held now at the, the local uh, public climb or private climbing gym mm -hmm. called Center 45. Um, and then there have been other competitions through the years. There have been ones held at the Footslogger's Climbing Tower. Center 45 has hosted numerous competitions over the last two years that they've been open, that kind of thing. Um, though in Boone, I would say so SoCo and Hound Deers are the biggest ones. All right. That's really cool stuff. I can't really think of anything else to talk. Thank you very much for talking yeah. with me. Thank you.